mind he was still on the Lord. Well, I, I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind he was still on Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. given to us. <clears throat> Scripture records this is a day that the Lord has made yeah. and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for causing our family to be awakened, to arise, come together for the purpose of worshiping and serving him. Welcoming all of our visiting guests and friends and we just pray that, that this will be a fulfilling day of worship, even those who are not in our presence on the air. I have these words of announcements. The Church of Christ at Center Road Gospel Meeting is Sunday, September 15th through Wednesday, September 18th. The guest speaker is Brother Darrell Bowdry. Please see the bulletin board for more details. The next food giveaway is this Tuesday, September 17th, from 10 a.m. until noon. Our next closed giveaway is Saturday, September 21st, 10 a.m. until noon. There will be a meeting held on Saturday, September 28th at 10 a.m. for all the teachers and any prospective teachers. We have a, a meeting calling up for all, allowing all those who wish to teach, who are teachers, to come out and, and make your wishes known. Our fifth Sunday special offering is Sunday, September 29th, please prepare for that special offering. That's our fifth Sunday offering. Calling all model ages 20 and up, all models. The United Fund Workers of Northeast Ohio are hosting a Generations of Grace fashion show. It's November 16th from 5 to 7.30 p.m. here at the University Church. The, the tickets are $30 and include a spaghetti dinner. Models see a United Fund Worker to volunteer and, and, and ask for more details. This is a special fundraiser that we're having for United Fund Workers, and it's hosted the 16th here at the University of Church. The Germantown Pike Church of Christ in Dayton, Ohio, invites you to attend the Song Fest and installation service of their new minister, Michael Mitchell. Song Fest, featuring our own brother Ricky Barnes, Jr., is Saturday, September 18th, I'm sorry, is Saturday, September 28th at 2 o'clock p.m. On Sunday, September 29th, the Bible study begins at 9 a.m. Worship service at 10, 15 a.m. and the installation program is at 3 o'clock p.m. Um, please see the bulletin board for further details, including hotel information and registration deadline. <coughs> we ask to please continue to pray for Brother and Sister McLean our elders, Brother Frank Barnes, and all, all those other members in our family who are sick and not well. Pray for our deacons and also for the, also additional prayer requests for Brother Nelson's aunt and cousin who is in the Cleveland Clinic due to illness. We ask your special prayers on, on those behalf. Keeping those also in, in prayers are Sister Nicole Bird, Sister Peggy Jackson, Sister Doris Murphy, Sister Lydia Murphy, Sister Ruth Wade, Sister Ruth Wade is with us this morning. Thank God that she's able to be here with us. And we ask a special prayer for those who are traveling, and uh, grace for those who are not here with us. Special prayers for Sister Latrice Shields and all of those who are traveling away from us. Continue prayers for all of our bereaved families in the loss of their loved ones and for all caregivers. We just ask prayers, continue to ask prayers for one another, all of those in the churches of Christ throughout the land and, and the country. And Special, special traveling grace for those members who are yet to arrive here at, at our services this morning. Our order of worship for this morning, myself, Donald Nelson, call to worship. Song leader, Brother Greg Shields. Meditation, Brother Bruce Johnson. Prayer will be hosted by Brother Jerome McDuffie, will be had by Brother Jerome McDuffie. Sermon, Brother Terrence McLean. Response, Brother Amos Hicks. Communion service, Brother Ray Knight. And Brother Justin Shields will serve at our benediction prayer. I will come back with our offering. 
scripture reading from Isaiah 55th chapter. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk, without money, without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and let your souls delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David, indeed, I have given him as a witness for the people, a leader and commander for all the people. Surely you shall call a nation that you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall call on you. Verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his righteousness. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God. For he, God, will abundantly bless. Let us go to God in prayer. Bountiful and blessed God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for causing us to be awake. Come together this morning for the purpose of worshiping and serving you. We thank you, Lord, for guiding us and directing our paths, our footsteps. We thank you for all those areas where we, where we sought you, Lord, and you've been right there for us and been right re- there with us. We ask your special prayer, Lord, on behalf of our members who are sick and not well. Brother Barnes' names that we have named, Sister Nicole Bird, Brother and Sister McLean. We've asked special prayers on their behalf. So, Lord, you are our God, and you have all healing in your hand. Pray a special prayer on behalf of my cousin, who's at Cleveland Clinic, and in the, in the I see you. We just trust and bless you, Lord. We surrender our all to you. We, we dedicate, especially dedicate, our purses, our cash, our hearts, our spirits, our souls. We want to sing praises unto you, Lord. Bless us as we receive your preached word. Bless our minister as he comes before us shortly to present your word to us. Bless Sister McLean. Help us, Lord, and bless us. Bless your church. Through Jesus Christ, we all pray. Let us all say amen. 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 May I invite us to get a songbook? Let's sing with Brother Greg Shields. Yeah, I want to say good morning to everyone as well. Um, let's start off with two, um, <laughs> 248. Okay, missing the page here, but that's all right. Um, <clears throat> if you haven't, let us sing. <clears throat> I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted day And watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven way But if my Savior calls me to that sweet home on high I'll live with him forever in glory by and by Oh yes, I'll live in glory and by and by, I'll tell and sing the story. There on high, there with my dear Redeemer. No more to die. Oh, yes, I live in glory. By and by, I want to be of service along the pilgrim way and lead the lost to Jesus as fervently I pray. Yes, day by day I travel, I'll keep him ever nigh and live with him forever in glory by and by. 
Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing the story there on high, there with my dear Redeemer. More or to die. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. The end I know is nearing. By faith I look away to yonder home supernal of the land of endless day. I'll cling to him forever and look beyond the sky and live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh yes, I'll live in glory by and by. I'll tell and sing love. I'm singing it there on high, there with my dear Redeemer. Oh, more to die. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory by and by. Our next song is going to be Sing and Be Happy on 472. If you have a book, if not, it's on the, um, it's on the screen there. Um, sing and be happy. Sing and be happy. <clears throat> This is a necessity now, not to just quench your thirst, but it's uh, more of a necessity now. Sing and be happy. Sing and be, be happy. Off half, off out. <clears throat> If the skies above you are gray and you are feeling so blue, if your cares and burdens seem gray all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises. Why don't you just sing and be happy? Press on to the goal. Trust in him who, who leads you. He will keep your soul. Let it all be faithful. Look to Jesus and Pray, 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 lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. I take new courage, we cannot tell what tomorrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can. We're singing, singing, and I know be happy, press on to the goal. Trust in him who, who leads you here. He will keep your soul, let the world oh, be faithful, look to Jesus and pray, lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today, oft we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. Oh, when it seems the fortunes of her frown and passes us by, there are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. 
If we and trust him each day, we shall have pleasures unto. Why don't you just sing? And I know you'll be happy. Press on to the goal. Trust in him who, who leads you. He, he will keep your soul. Let all the whole world be faithful look to jesus and pray lift your voice and praise him in song sing and be happy today Could the church say amen? amen i am before you with today's meditation and the scripture reading meditation will be taken from john 15 verses 9 through 12 Cross to be found inside the joint form. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. This morning's scripture reading will be taken from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. And the Bible reads, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God, so that you will be able to stand against, stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God, so that you will be able to resist on the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. May the Lord add a blessing to all those who hear, understand, and obey his holy and divine word. Now please prepare your heart that we might be led in prayer. My brother Jerome, look up. Have thine own will, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am eating, yielded have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Wider than snow, Lord, watch me just as in thy presence, humbly I bow. Let us pray. <coughs> Our Father God, we're just so grateful and thankful once again that you continue to wake us up daily. So grateful and thankful, Heavenly Father, that the ones that were able to be here has come into the house of the Lord that were able to worship you in spirit and truth, Father. Father, so grateful and thankful for this opportunity to be able to hear the word of God. So grateful and thankful for each opportunity that we have to 
fellowship amongst one another. As we continue into this service, Heavenly Father, we just ask that you bless our servant, that he can remember all the things that he studied and that he's able to break it down, Heavenly Father, that we can also use it and apply it in our day-to-day -day life with thee. Father, continue prayers for our elders, our deacons, and just our church as a whole, Heavenly Father, that's going through many things and difficulties in life, Heavenly Father. As we're going through struggles and we're going through financial burdens and we're going through sick and health, Heavenly Father. But Father, we know that you are the creator and we know that you know all things. Father, we pray that you continue to give us the tools that we need, Heavenly Father, to continue this journey with thee. Father, watch over all the churches of Christ all over the country as we all are dealing with difficulties and struggles in our lives. But we know because of you, Heavenly Father, we're able to fight on, to keep moving forward no matter what our situations may be. Father, again, we just want to thank you for this day because this day is what matters. This day is what keeps us focused and holding on to God's unchanging hand. Continue prayers for the sick, the sick and shut in, Heavenly Father. Continue prayers for those ones that's just struggling and still haven't found their way to you, Heavenly Father. But Father, today we just pray that you give them all an appointed time to come to you before it's everlasting too late. Father, we ask all this in your holy and divine name. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. Amen. After the next song, we hear from our minister brother, uh, Brother McLean. <clears throat> On the wings of a snow-white dove, he sends his pure, sweet love, a sign from above, on the wings of a dove. When trouble surrounds us, or when evils come, how the body grows weak and the spirit grows numb. Oh, when these things be said, uh, I know he doesn't forget it. Uh, he sends down his love on the wings of a dove. Well, on the wings of a snow. He sends his pure, sweet love You are a sign from above On the wings of a dove But when Noah had drifted On the flood many For land uh, in various ways and trouble he has some. Uh, oh, well, but he wasn't forgotten. Uh, he sent down his love on the wings of a dove. Well, on the wings of a 
us know why a dove a God's in this pure sweet love a sign from above on the wings of a dove when Jesus went down to the river that day he was baptized in the usual way and when it was done well God blessed his son he sent him his love on the wings of a dove yeah, on the wings of a snow white dove a God sends his pure sweet love of a sign from above on the wings of a dove well on the wings of a snow white snow white yeah god sends his pure sweet love a sign from above on the wings of a dove amen on the wings of a snow white dove god sends his pure sweet love we're thankful to god for blessing all of us with the opportunity to come together and to worship him in spirit and in truth uh, we thank brother donald nelson one of our elders for ushering us into the presence of god almighty uh, we thank god for our singing bishop brother greg shields for leading us in praises to god almighty thank you for blending your voices together in praise to the God who deserves all of the glory, the honor, and the praise that we can give him. We thank Brother Bruce Johnson for leading us in the meditation as well as the reading of the scripture. And then, of course, we're thankful for Brother Jerome. Uh, I, I knew you didn't look like uh, Brother Richard Barnes II, but did a good job in leading us to the throne of grace in prayer. And it's good to have you and your family back with us. Uh, on today. Uh, Brother Hicks will be taking our responses on today. Brother Ray Knight will be leading us as we commune with our Lord and Savior. And then Brother Donald Nelson will come back and give us an opportunity to give to God as he has prospered us. And then young Brother Justin Shields will be coming and giving us the benediction. Remember that though he dismisses us from this place, that we are never dismissed from the presence of God Almighty. We thank all of our brethren, thank all of you for participating, those of you who are watching on social media or on the teleconference call, thank you so much for joining us, especially if you're not a member of the church, whether you are watching on social media, on the teleconference call, or even in this auditorium. Our prayer is that you will realize we're people who love the Lord, and we endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. We believe there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all, who's above all, through all, and in us all. And if you have any questions about anything that you see or you hear, please don't hesitate to ask us. Peter says we're to sanctify the Lord God in our hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks us, a reason of the hope that is within us with meekness and with, with fear. Let's pray for uh, the gospel meeting that began today at the Center Road Church of Christ with Brother Darrell Bowdry 
As the guest speaker, we want to pray for Brother Bates, the evangelist to that local church, and the saints of God who are members of that congregation. We are thankful to God for Brother Hogan and Brother Adria Wilson, as well as Brother Mark Parker and their preaching of the gospel this past week at the symposium at the Boulevard Church of Christ. And so we certainly want to continue to pray for that work, as well as the Wooster Avenue Church, who starts a gospel meeting next week uh, at, uh, in Akron, Ohio. So there's a lot of good preaching that's going on. And we are thankful to God for each one of the brothers who are doing those. Brother Mark Parker will be preaching at the Wooster Avenue Church in that meeting, uh, as well as do we pray for Brother Greg Dortch, the local evangelist and the members of the body of Christ there. I want you to open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 13. Please continue uh, to lift Brother Frank Barnes, one of our elders, in prayer uh, as, as God heals him. Uh, we also are praying for uh, asking you to lift Sister Linda in, in prayer, Sister McLean. Uh, she's a real trooper. I know that she is a little discouraged by all that's going on, but we know God is the great physician. He is a divine healer. And you can't have a better doctor than him. And so please continue to lift Linda. I love her dearly, and she loves you, and she misses you. And we just pray that soon she'll be able to join us as well. No excuse for us not getting out on time. Y'all did a great job of getting me up here. <laughs> you did a great job of getting me up here, Brother Greg said. They tried. They tried. I do want to talk to you uh, from, from a subject uh, that I think kind of grows out of our Sunday morning Bible study. Uh, and it's from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 13. And I'm going to read it to you from the New American Standard Bible. There the word of God says this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his, his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist on the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Strength for the struggle. Will you pray with me? O wise and all merciful Father who art in heaven, holy and reverend is your name. We humbly bow before you, asking you, O God, to bless us to sense your presence here with us. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. And our prayer is that everything we've done has been pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Father, thank you for the brethren who have led us in various aspects of worship and who will lead us and others following this message. Thank you for their willingness to use the gifts, the talents that you've given them to lead your people into your presence our prayer is that you would bless us now as we join with them, standing in the presence of your people, either in this auditorium, the sanctuary, or those who may be on the teleconference call, or those who might be on social media. I humble myself before you. I bow before the cross of Calvary. I pray that you get the glory that Jesus Christ is lifted up that saints of God are edified, built up in the most holy and precious faith, and that those who have not yet obeyed the gospel 
that your Holy Spirit will take this word, convict them of the need of the salvation that's in Christ and in him alone. Father, we live in a day and age when there are a lot of people running around talking about my truth and your truth and their truth and our truth. And we realize the only truth that matters is your truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me in John 14, 6. Father, I pray that I will speak that truth. And like Paul says, speak truth in love. I want to lift up Jesus. I want you to get all the glory. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Strength for, for the struggle. All of us who are members of the body of Christ could say, I love God. I Trust Christ. I obey the word of God. I obey the gospel of Christ. But, but it seems I have more struggles than before when I became a Christian. Why is that? Have you ever asked that question? Are you asking that question now? The question is based on the false assumption that being saved, being a child of God, ends all of our struggles. I stop by to remind you that you will face struggles you would not have if you were not in Christ. But that God gives us strength for, for the struggle. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 20 is the final section of Paul's letters to the Christians at Ephesus. It may be considered a third section of the letter. Chapters 1 through 3 of the book of Ephesians present the doctrine that we must believe. Chapter 4, verse 1 through chapter 6, verse 9 present the duty that we must fulfill as children of God. Chapter 6, verse 10 through 20 presents the difficulties that we must overcome as the people of God. Chapters 1 through 3 are about the believer's spiritual wealth. Chapter 4, verse 1 through 6 and verse 9 is about the obedient believer's spiritual walk. And chapter 6, verse 10 through 20 is about the obedient believer's spiritual warfare. In chapters 1 through 3, we as Christians are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. In chapter 4, verse 1 through chapter 6, verse 9, we as Christians are instructed to walk in faith and obedience. And then in chapter 6, verse 10 through 20, we as Christians are called to stand in victory. Yeah. Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 20 is the most complete statement about spiritual warfare in all of the Bible. It is the only New Testament passage that describes Christian living as a battle. This section on spiritual warfare follows the instructions on Christian duty. And if you live out your faith in obedience, Satan will fight back. Your personal devotion to Christ will be attacked. Your doctrinal convictions will be attacked. Your fellowship with other saints of God will be attacked. The Christian life is an ongoing struggle. Christianity is a battleground, not a playground. The, Paul, the Apostle Paul wrote to young Timothy in 1 Timothy 6 and verse 12, fight the good fight of faith, take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. We who are children of God must be strong Christians to stand firm in spiritual warfare. 
And if you and I are honest, as we look around the world that we currently live in, we must understand that we are engaged in spiritual warfare. In our hymn book, The Songs of the Church, number 481, there, there is a hymn entitled, I Am a Soldier of the Cross. Verse 1 and 2 remind us of this battle that we are engaged in. Verse 1 says, I am a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb, and shall I fear to own his cause or blush to speak his name? Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease while others fought to win the prize that sailed on bloody seas? Verse 2 says, are there no foes for me to face? Must I not stem the flood? Is this vile world a friend to grace to help me on to God? Sure, I must fight if I would reign. Increase my courage, Lord. I'll bear the toil, endure the pain, supported by thy word. The question for you and I is how can I gain strength? For, for the struggle. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. If we are honest with ourselves as human beings, we are weak, we are finite, we are sinful people. You and I cannot face the flesh, we cannot face the world, and we certainly cannot face the devil alone and expect to win. But the strength that's needed for victory is not our strength. It, it does not come from our fleshly strength. It does not come from our intellectual strength. It does not come from our psychological strength. The strength that we need for the spiritual warfare is for victory that is in the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7 through verse number 9 says this, because of the extraordinary greatness of the revelations, this is the Apostle Paul talking, for this reason to keep me from exalting myself, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might leave me, and he has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Our strength comes from the Lord. We ought to look for our strength from the Lord. We need to trust the Lord for our eternal salvation. Verse number 10 exhorts us to be strong where? In the Lord. It doesn't say just be strong anywhere. It says be strong in the Lord. If you are not in the Lord, then you cannot have access to his strength. You and I must trust Christ for salvation and our trust in Christ is demonstrated when we obey him. Romans 5 verse number 8 says, For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. The pride of the unbeliever makes him or her think that he or she is strong and the life of sin is the epitome of weakness. The only hope for weak sinners is for us to trust and obey Jesus Christ as Lord if we want to be saved. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 55 through 57 that the sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8, 9, and 10 says this, Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the source of eternal salvation to those who obey him, being designated by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Listen, you will never be saved. You will never see God's face in peace. You will never get to heaven and make heaven your home. If you are not in Christ Jesus. Paul told the young preacher in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 through 14, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was granted to us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. But it's now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher. For this reason, I also suffer these things, but I'm not ashamed, for I know in whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to protect what I've entrusted to him until that day. So he goes on and says to Timothy, hold on. Hold on to the example of sound words which you have heard from me in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus protect through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. The treasure which has been entrusted to you. What that treasure is, the gospel of Christ that you and I must tell the world in order for them to be free from their sins. Galatians chapter 3 verse 26 and 27 Paul says, for you are all sons and daughters. Again, this is the New American Standard Bible. For you are all sons and daughters of God. Where? Through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. The only way you can be strong in the Lord, you got to be in the Lord. And the only way you can be in the Lord is obey from the heart. That means with the right motive, and it means obeying the truth. Obey from the heart, that form of doctrine that was delivered unto you, and being then made free from sin. You became the servants of righteousness. Romans chapter 6 verse 17 we need to not only be in the Lord, but we need to trust him for our, our strength. You cannot be strong if you are not in the Lord. And you are not strong because you are in the Lord. Okay, and y'all didn't catch that, did you? You cannot be strong if you are not in the Lord. And you are not strong because you are in the Lord. The strength that you and I need is available. But it's not automatic. We must trust. And that word trust means depend on the Lord. In order to access this strength. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. I talked about it in Sunday school this morning in 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. David responded in a moment of crisis and it says, But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. David did not encourage himself with positive self-talk. David's enemies had defeated him. His soldiers were near revolt. David prayed to God and found his strength in the Lord. I don't want to lose any friends, but this is true anyhow. Some things we blame on the enemy. 
may be the Lord's work to force us to trust him. You see, in order to be strong in the Lord, you've got to obey him. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. This is a divine imperative. To live in spiritual weakness is to live in spiritual rebellion. God commands you and I to be strong. And the grammar indicates that it's continuous, repeated, or ongoing activity. It is a way of life. And this strength is internal, but it's not inherent. We ought to be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. But that strength is found in submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You cannot experience divine enablement if you do not submit to divine authority. In James chapter 4 verse 7, a book that we are studying on Wednesdays right now in midweek Bible study. In James 4 verse 7, James said, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you don't submit to God first, the devil's going to have a field day with you. You see, spiritual warfare is not about learning how to fight the devil. Spiritual warfare is about learning how to obey the Lord. On the eve of the battle of Jericho, Joshua encountered an unidentified warrior with his sword drawn. Joshua asked the question, are you for us or our adversaries? In Joshua chapter 5, verse 14, the answer comes, No, but I am the commander of the army of the Lord. Now I have come. Even as I look at the political world and this upcoming election, and as I'm listening to folk on television, everybody is trying to claim the Lord is on their side. I got news for you. The Lord does not take sides. He takes over. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all got real quiet on that. The Lord takes over. During the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln was asked if he thought the Lord was on the side of the Union. He answered, it does not matter if the Lord is on our side. It only matters if we are on the Lord's side. The question I ask you today is whose side are you on? Verse 11 of Ephesians chapter 6 records a divine command and the intended result. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. But you can't put on the whole armor of God if you haven't put on Christ. This command in verse 11 fulfills the command in verse 10. The way to be strong in the Lord is to put on the whole armor of God. Strong Christians are dressed for battle. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24 says, put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Part of our problem is too many of us are dragging that old man around with us every day and we're allowing him to control our thoughts, our actions, and our reactions. Paul says, put on the new self. And that new self is created out of the likeness of God. That new self looks like God. In righteousness and holiness. This new spiritual wardrobe includes battle attire. As the Roman soldier wore armor to protect his body, the Christian soldier wears armor to God his or her soul. 
So what is the armor of God? In verse 14 through 17, Paul gives us the answer. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, in all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. In order to have on the belt of truth, it must be God's truth and not your truth. Paul, Paul says God owns the armor. In divine sovereignty, God gives the armor in divine generosity and God wears the armor in divine justice. The whole armor of God is the Lord's battle gear. God extends his armor to those of us who trust and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Put on the whole armor. Notice it says put on the whole armor. The whole armor. It does not matter if you have the belt of truth if you do not have the breastplate of righteousness. It does not matter if you have the shoes of the gospel if you do not have the helmet of salvation. It does not matter if you have the shield of faith if you do not have the sword of the spirit. These are not individual accessories. It is a complete wardrobe. You will fall for the wiles of the devil if you don't put on the whole armor of God. And then, then he says, not only do you need to put it on, once you put it on, you need to take a stand. And he doesn't mean you're supposed to look in the mirror and admire how good you look. He says, stand against the schemes of the devil. King James Version says, wiles. Other versions say, strategies. As Christians, we have three spiritual enemies. Number one, the world is our external enemy. Number two, the flesh, our carnal nature, is our internal enemy. And then number three, the devil, is our infernal enemy. Verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. This exhortation reminds you and I that the devil is real. He is not the figment of preacher's imaginations. And he's not a boogeyman dressed up in a red jumpsuit with a pointed tail and horns on his head and a pitchfork on his, in his hand. C.S. Lewis wrote, there are two equal and opposite eras into which our race can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence and the other is to believe and then feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. Brothers and sisters, it is foolish to deny the existence of the devil. Can I tell you something? You do not believe the Bible if you do not believe in the devil. Hello? You do not believe in God if you do not believe in the devil. You do not believe in heaven if you do not believe in hell. Because the same Bible that tells us about heaven tells us about hell. The same Bible that tells us about God tells us about Satan. In fact, that same Bible says Jesus had an encounter with him in the wilderness himself. Yes, 
but it's also foolish to become preoccupied with the devil's plans and his works and his hopes. Don't you know the devil can't make you do anything? The power of Satan is not force, it's trickery. It's not might, but deceit. It's not strength, but trickery. Put on the whole armor of God to stand against the schemes of the devil. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 states that the goal of spiritual growth process among Christians is so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Satan uses deceitful schemes of false teaching to defeat Christians. And the New Testament never instructs Christians to attack Satan and his forces. Hello. We put on the whole armor of God to stand against the schemes of the devil. When we're tempted to, to do wrong, we need to flee as Joseph ran from Potiphar's wife who tried to get him to go to bed with her in Genesis chapter 39, verse 7 through 12, and we need to run before we sin and not after. When we're attacked for doing right, we need to stand our ground as Daniel did, even though it landed him in the lion's den in Daniel chapter 6. Strong Christians stand firm against the devil's schemes. Verse 11, exhorts the Christian soldier to put on the whole arm of God to stand against the schemes of the devil. Then verse 12 explains why. For we wrestle, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Our struggle is not against human forces. Verse 12 says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. The Greek word there, wrestle, means hand-to-hand -hand combat to the death. It is a death match. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but it is a death match. It's an enemy for humanity or an idiom for humanity. We are not wrestling against humanity. Our struggle is against spiritual wickedness in high places. The statement does not deny the reality of human opposition. The passage is strategically placed alongside the instructions for us as Christians in our marriage and family and in our work relationships, there will be times when you have to do the will of God in spite of your husband or in spite of your wife or your parents or your children or your boss or employees or co-workers, but people are not your biggest problem. We lose battles because we show up for the wrong fight. As Christians, we're not called to fight people. And we certainly have no business fighting one another. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 5 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Galatians 5, 15 says, But if you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. We as Christians have no business fighting one another. Our struggle is against 
spiritual, spiritual forces. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Any attempt to define or distinguish between these terms, as some people try to do, is speculative. The emphasis is on the term repeated six times in this passage, five times in this verse, four times in reference to our spiritual enemies against. We wrestle against the rulers. We wrestle against the authorities. We wrestle against the cosmic powers over this present darkness. We wrestle against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Our spiritual enemy is invisible, powerful, and organized. Did you all hear me? Our spiritual enemy is invisible, powerful, and organized. Our struggle is against spiritual forces of evil. And in this text, it's the only place in the New Testament where the word spiritual has a negative connotation. How often do I hear people say, I am not religious, I am spiritual. There is nothing inherently virtuous about being spiritual. Every person is a spirit being living in a physical body. Being spiritual is nothing to brag about. Satan and demons are spiritual too. I knew I wouldn't get a lot of amens on that one. 1 John chapter 4 verse 4 says, Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And then verse number 13 says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. So the question is, when is the evil day? The days before Christ's second coming will be particularly evil. Those are the days that you and I live in. But this is not about the last days. It's about the present day. Paul said in Ephesians 5, verse 15 and 16, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Yet Paul was not just referring to the cultural situation of his day. The evil day is any day the enemy attacks. When you are a new convert, newly baptized into Christ, that can be an evil day. When you are spiritually idle, that can be an evil day. When you are isolated from other Christians because you don't attend Bible study or worship service consistently, you are in an evil day. During times of loss or sorrow or trouble, during seasons of transition in your life, or even after you have won a victory, and when you are near to death, you are living in evil day. The enemy will never call you to warn you an attack is coming tomorrow. Or call you to warn you an attack is coming next week or next month. It's always a sneak attack. The evil day may be any day and you need to be ready for battle every day. Verse 13 says, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the evil day and having done all to stand firm. What is the mark of a strong Christian? It is the perseverance of the saints. Being a strong Christian has nothing to do with health, wealth, favor, prosperity, or success. It is staying power, even when you don't have any of these things. Strong Christians keep standing. And having done all, stand. Today, if you're not a child of God and you haven't obeyed the gospel of Christ, then you can't stand. You can't stand because you're not in the place where all the standing is supposed to be done, and that's in Christ. 
For all who are in Christ are children of God. For all who are in Christ have his might, his power. You need to hear how Jesus lived on this earth, how he died on the cross for your sins, how he was buried in a borrowed tomb and how he got up from the dead that third day and he ascended back to heaven and he's on the right hand of God and one day he's coming back again and he's coming back for his church, his bride, his body. He's coming back for a people who look like him. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17, you've heard the word of God. Are you willing to believe it? Jesus said in John 8, 24, except you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. And where I am, you cannot come. Are you willing to repent of your sins, change your mind, change your will, change your action? Jesus said in Luke 13, 3 and 5, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Are you willing to confess with the mouth that Jesus Christ is God's son? Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, Kim, well, I confess before my Father which is in heaven. And whoever denies me before men, him will I deny before my Father which is in heaven. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Are you willing to be buried in water for the remission of sins? Acts 2, 38. When they asked the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter answered and said unto them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you, why? For the remission of sins. And what's going to happen? You will receive. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You cannot be in Christ without the Holy Ghost. You cannot have the strength of Christ without the Holy Spirit. You need to be buried in Christ or buried in water so you can be baptized into Christ. There, there's just something about Jesus. I don't know about you, but I need strength for my struggle and I can't do it on my own. But I have a king who can. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God son. He's a sinner savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meager. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. He's indescribable incomprehensible, invincible and irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't get him off of your hand. You can't outlive him and you sure enough can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him and the grave couldn't hold him because early Sunday morning he got up from the dead and said now now all power in heaven and in earth has been given unto me. He's the head of the church that he bought with his own blood. He's the head of the church that one day he's coming back for. He can be the head of your life if you humble yourself and obey the gospel of Christ. I don't, I, I don't know about you, but he's my king. 
And he's my strength for my struggle. Do you need to obey the gospel? Do you need to be restored in your walk with God? Will you come right now as we together stand and sing the song of invitation? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grave this hour? Are you, Are washed? you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, Are you washed in the blood in the, in the soul cleansing blood. blood of the Lamb? Are your garments Are Spotless are they white as snow. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the pool? If I are you washed? In the blood of the Lamb, are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb, are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Truly, we're thankful to God Almighty for blessing all of us with the privilege and the opportunity to come together and to, to worship God in spirit and in truth. I am thankful to God Almighty for allowing me once again the privilege to stand and proclaim his, his right. word. My prayer is that God has been pleased with the message, the motive behind it, the content of it, as well as the method of its delivery, that he's gotten all the glory and that Jesus has been lifted up so all of us can be drawn to the foot of the cross of Calvary. And that if you are a child of God, you've been encouraged and built up in the most holy and precious faith. And if you've not yet obeyed the gospel of Christ, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will take this word and convict you of the need of the salvation that's in Christ and in him alone. And if you have any questions about anything that you've heard, seen, or experienced, please don't, don't hesitate to ask us. For all of you who are Christians, remember to do something that only a Christian would do. And whether you're a Christian or not, remember God loves you. Jesus died for you. I love you. And I am your servant for Jesus' sake. Amen. 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 Sister Wade is asking for prayer for herself, her family, her health, her grandsons, uh, for her husband. So let's keep her in prayer. Let's keep Brother Frank Barnes in prayer. Sister Pam's not here today, but let's remember all those that she always wants to keep in prayer. And we are in a troubled world. So let's pray for not only our churches and their leaders, but also our political leaders. We've got a big decision to make this November. Let's pray that we make it wisely. Let's go to God in prayer. Our merciful Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace asking that you forgive us of our sins and guide us in our lives that we might sin no more. We thank you, Lord, that you have continued to bless us, to watch over us, to care for us, feed us and clothe us, give us our jobs, our cars, our homes. Everything we have came from you. We ask, Heavenly Father, that we would never forget the great sacrifice that you made for us. 
the sacrifice of the life of your son that we might have life everlasting. Amen. Father, go with us. Continue to watch over us. Send your spirit to guide us, to direct our lives, to lift us up when we fail. And Father, when our work is done, we ask that you would give us a resting place at your footstool. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. In continuing with our worship service, we uh, turn our thoughts now to the communion. Uh, if you don't have a communion packet, uh, if you can raise your hand, we'll get one, get one to you. I'm going to take that as everyone having one. Um, let's, let, let, let's sing 376 as Rick has on the board. Thank you, brother, brother Rick. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow oh no other found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus our scripture reading this morning for communion will be taken from Matthew, the 27th chapter. We'll be reading about the trial that Jesus endured leading up to his crucifixion. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Verse 11. Now Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, saying, Are you king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, It is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he answered him not one word, so that the governor marveled greatly. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the multitude one prisoner who they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him saying, have nothing to do with that just man for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said to them, what of the two do you want me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, what then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said to him, let him be crucified. Then the governor said, why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, saying, let him be crucified. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, it is with continued reverence that we approach your throne of grace, thanking you for the privilege to commune with the saints. In recognition of the supreme sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, we ask that you bless this unleavened bread, which commemorates his broken body, and the fruit of the vine, which commemorates his shed blood. And we pray that our collective preparation for this communion service is pleasing and acceptable to you. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen.
For my part in this I see Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my cleansing this my plea Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow and no other thought I know nothing but the blood of Jesus Let's thank Brother McLean for that timely message this Amen morning. Gives us all instructions on how we may be children of a king, children of God. It is now time for us to consider giving back to the Lord a portion of what he has given to us that we should give. Luke 6, 38 records, judge not and you should not be judged, condemn not and you should not be condemned, forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given unto you. Good measurement pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom, for with the same measurement that you use, it will be measured back to you. That topic of the same measure is continued in 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. But this I say, he was sowed sparingly, will also reap sparingly by the same measurement. And he who sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. So let each of you give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. God teaches us that what we do, what we give, will be given unto us. What we measure will be measured unto us again. Even by commandments to be children of the king, children of God, the measure that we use will be measured back to us. God's judgment will also prevail. Let us go to God in prayer. God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this occasion. We thank you for blessing us with the commandment to give as we, have, as we receive. Now, Lord, we just thank you for uh, allowing us to have and to accumulate portions of wealth and of, but, but our time and our strength and our energy we promise, Lord, we want to give back to you as you have given unto us. Bless us through Jesus Christ. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. I didn't receive any visitor cards. If we have visiting guests with us, with us, kindly stand that we may acknowledge your presence. Any visiting guests, friends, please stand. This, you are our honored guest, and we just pray that even if you decide not to stand, we pray that you'll come back and worship together with us once again. Thank you. We thank God for, for blessing us with the word from his, from his king. We thank God for his word, his message, his directives to us. Other announcements? Let us now stand as we prepare for our benediction prayer. Please stand. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. And no, not. You never had no, not one. And none else can hear all our souls deep. And well, no, nah, you never had no, nah, you know, all about our struggle, he will, till the day, and where there's not a friend like the lowly, Saying no, nah, you never had no, nah, one. Let us pray. Dear Lord, 
Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for allowing us to have a good, wonderful morning service. Thank you for allowing Brother McLean to preach the message. Amen. Please help us to have a safe trip home and a good week at our jobs and that we will be able to teach other people the gospel so that they can become baptized into Christ. In Jesus' name, as we are. Amen. 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 Amen.